Hi, I'm Ben Jolant, and today I would like to talk to you about the classical treatment of the Duffing Oscillator. The Duffing Oscillator, or Duffing Equation, came from the work of George Duffing, a German engineer who worked in both Germany and the United States during his life. Duffing worked on a variety of problems, including the early development of the gas engine and the friction and viscosity of lubricating oils. In 1918, Duffing published his work on pendulum oscillations, in which he included what we know today as the Duffing Equation, or the Duffing Oscillator. Since the 1970s, the Duffing Oscillator, or Duffing Equation, has been a popular system for the study of chaos. However, apart from chaos, classical treatment of the Duffing Oscillator also yields a number of interesting results, including hysteresis, amplitude jumps, harmonics, and subharmonics. Here we have Duffing's equation without damping included. Nonlinearity in the system comes from the presence of the x cubed term. The coefficient of the x cubed term is negative as we are assuming softening in the system rather than hardening from the nonlinearity. In making a guess for the solution of the system, if we choose a solution with the form c1 cosine omega t, the cubic term will generate a cosine of 3 omega t. This can be seen by using a trig expansion with Euler's formula. Since we will generate a cosine of 3 omega t term with our first guess, let's include this in our second guess. Our second guess will then be of the form c1 cosine of omega t plus c3 cosine of 3 omega t. If we substitute our second guess into the undamped Duffing equation, we get the following result, where the ellipses indicate the cosine of 5 omega t, cosine of 7 omega t, and the cosine of 9 omega t terms, which are again generated by the nonlinearity. With a bit of mathematical analysis, we can show that the magnitude of c3 over c1 is much, much less than 1, provided the magnitude of c1 is much, much less than lambda, and most importantly, that the driving frequency is not close to one-third the natural frequency. This allows the expression to be simplified in the following way. Utilizing the simplification and noting that the coefficients of each term must be equal to zero, we can rewrite the zero coefficient of the cosine of omega t term as follows. This expression can be rewritten for omega squared in terms of c1. We can think of the left-hand side of this expression as two functions of c1, one is a parabola and one is a hyperbola. Using graphical techniques, we are given the displayed resonance curve from the previous expression. If we include damping, the resonance curve changes in the following way. Note that with this change, we have a triple valued region between omega a squared and omega b squared, as they will be marked. This triple valued region will result in the hysteresis and amplitude jumps that we will observe in experiment. One way the Duffing equation can be physically modeled is as a saw blade oscillator, as depicted in this schematic. A saw blade with a magnet attached is deflected by a coil driven by a function generator. A laser is then aimed at the saw and reflected onto a wall to serve as an accessible visual proxy for the saw blade's deflection. The deflection of the saw blade as a function of time is taken to be x of t, our solution to the Duffing equation. Here, I have constructed a Duffing saw blade oscillator. It includes a laser, a function generator, and a saw blade driven by a coil connected to the function generator. We can use this system to observe hysteresis and amplitude jumps. We begin by driving the saw blade oscillator at 12.50 Hz. We then begin stepping it up with small steps in frequency. Note that the change in the deflection of the beam's amplitude grows, but does so continuously. As we exceed 12.65 Hz, notice the amplitude jump. Deflection grows rapidly, exceeding that of frequency A by a large amount. Once we reach 12.7 Hz, we begin stepping down.
Here, we have reached our previous jump frequency. Note that the deflection amplitude is still significantly larger than it was on the way up. Continuing to step down, we notice that this amplitude then collapses to the previous value. Pictured at the top of the screen is the step-up amplitude response of the system, however using a slightly different beam, hence the different resonant frequency. Pictured at the bottom, now, is the step-down response of that same system. Plotting the two together, we see hysteresis and amplitude jumps. Note the bistable region indicative of hysteresis in the system. Additionally, note frequency A where the amplitude jump on the step up response occurs, as well as frequency B where the amplitude jump on the step down response occurs. The experimental data fits the qualitative predictions of the theory quite well in the exhibition of the bistable region as well as amplitude jumps. You may have noticed as well the x-axis here is in terms of hertz frequency rather than angular frequency squared. That is of no concern, however, as switching between the two does not significantly affect the shape of the curve. To observe the presence of the predicted harmonics, we need to drive the system at one-third the natural frequency, violating the assumption that allows the cosine of 3 omega t to be much smaller than the cosine omega t terms. If we record this motion with a high-speed camera, the presence of multiple frequencies is visibly apparent. For these results, we've let all transients die off. Plotting the displacement of the system confirms this. Additionally, looking at a Fourier transform of the data, we see the strong presence of the cosine of 3 omega t harmonic. These results confirm the predicted presence of harmonics in the system. A very interesting result was found when driving the system around the resonance peak at one-third the natural frequency where the first harmonic was exhibited. A resonance curve taken from the system also exhibits hysteresis and amplitude jumps, though with a smaller bistable region in terms of the frequency range. At this time, this peak is not thought to have been addressed in previous theory or experiment. It is an ongoing area of investigation for me.